So glad you could join us. Perfect weather. What a weekend it has been in College Station. For Hovac, one for ten through two games and outside for ball one. Freshman out of Orange, California, Villa Park High School. You know by now the SEC Freshman of the Year. X, how difficult is it to play two of these kinds of games in one day, knowing your season is on the line in both contests? Yeah, it's almost like fatigue. You don't want to think about it, but it definitely plays a part. You got to quickly turn around, flush the last game, take whatever momentum you can if you're Louisiana. But remember, you have a tough opponent, and it's going to be a different approach against this team. Grohovac hits sharply to second. And Taylor, almost playing as a shortstop, records the out. Well, the shift was on, and it pays dividends. The Louisiana defense, Higgs, Stelly, Broussard in the outfield. Sunbelt Player of the Year, Kyle DeBarge, the shortstop. Just got to look at John Taylor, Christie, and Torres. Round out the Raging Cajuns on the mound and behind home plate. Jace Lavulet got a hit this weekend, but he's been walked five times. Yeah, Lavulet's at bats have been good. You can just tell he's ready to break out with that one big swing that's going to allow him to hit one of those gaps. Breaking ball for a called strike one. Louisiana was eliminated by Texas a year ago down in Coral Cables. Raging Cajuns returned the favor in 2024. Matt Deggs always confident, always with something to prove, it feels like. Popped up. Shallow right center. And Broussard running in. Junior from Madison, Mississippi. He was the Mississippi Gatorade Player of the Year in 2021, and he signed with Stanford. A couple of outstanding seasons out west, and now back closer to home. Nearly came out of his cleats. <laughs> well, if there's one man to keep your eye on in this regional, it's Braden Montgomery. Expected to be a top 10 draft pick here this summer. The MLB first year player draft and you talked about him transferring from Stanford. You've seen him year by year progressively get better as a hitter. So sound with his approach at the plate. Over shift with two strikes in the dirt one and two. Back to back appearances in Omaha with the Cardinals. Playing in the Pac-12, Stanford moves into the ACC in 2025. The one thing that impresses me most watching Braden Montgomery is just his ability to spit on tough pitches, let the chase not beat him. Does a good job of being able to stay in his strike zone. Extremely calm in the box, not overly aggressive, knows how to use the whole field. One of the reasons why so many professional teams are looking at him to be their top draft choice. And Kylie McDaniel has Montgomery going six overall to Kansas City in his latest mock draft. We got some more gritty action going on right behind batter's box and this young man bringing in the gold chain today <laughs> he ain't messing around pop the chain I'll have whatever he's having inside corner and a called strike three and Montgomery didn't like it Christie did Montgomery Texas yeah, you got some velo coming out of the young lefty 93 94 does a good job of using the top of the zone with this fastball. He'll need that today. 
The slider is important to command. Change up cutter mix as well. But he's done a good job of limiting the walks. He will throw a lot of strikes, which helps give him some length in these ball games. Fist bump with his third baseman, Grahovac, and we are ready to go in the bottom of the first. Louisiana designated as the home team today. And here's Trey LaFleur, first team all Sun Belt Conference performer. Sadeo comes in with a first pitch strike at 94. Senior out of Pensacola, 357 on the year, four hits this weekend. 0 oh 2. Back to the first game for the Raging Cajuns on Friday and LaFleur against UT. A rocket in the right field. That made it 2 0. After that, it was all Texas. Different story today. The opposite field underneath the glove. And not in time of the shortstop. Camarillo and the leadoff man aboard for the Cajuns. And this is what's impressive about LaFleur is he can get to two strikes and it doesn't bother him because he's got such a short swing, extremely balanced at the plate, knows how to use the opposite field, does a good job of getting down the line, offering his team that first base runner. Single to short, fifth hit of the weekend for LaFleur. Here's Broussard, bunts it back to the mound. Only play at first, the 1-3 sacrifice. Raging Cajuns have as many sack bunts in this regional as Texas A&M has all season, four to be exact. Do with that information what you will. I want you to check out where Sadeo stands on the mound. He's all the way on that right side of the rubber. Cal to barge. Liner to center. Right at Laviolette. Hit sharply, but right at the center fielder. Sadeo's feet positioning is one of the reasons why he gives hitters so much trouble. It's almost a crossfire coming from that right side of the rubber. And if you're a lefty, it makes it even tougher because it looks like he's coming right at you as far as where he's standing. So it's right at your ear hole. Yes, he's using that very corner of that rubber. Off speed at 82. Lee Amade, sophomore from Gonzales, Louisiana. Four for 12 with a homer this weekend. Shane Sadeo. Lake Creek High School. Chop foul. Amadeus Homer. Got the scoring party started. 1 0. At that point in time. And the Cajuns were jacked up. Day, a little used player a year ago, only made 17 appearances, four starts, and right at 200. Played some football in high school. Serves this one to left field, and Sorrell. Jackson Appel leads things off. Strike one. 
Senior from Houston, pin transfer. First team all Ivy League, 0 and 2. David Christie on the mound, the senior majoring in civil engineering. Shift is on for Appel. Inside one and two. It's one thing to be an engineering major in college. It's another thing to be an engineering major in college and play big time sport like baseball. Appel, fly ball to right field. Taylor's got it. I think that's what we appreciate about the student athlete, right? A lot of these players, student first and athlete. Obviously, most of these guys will not go on to play professional baseball. So being able to get yourself an education, be able to get yourself started off the right foot after you're done with your university, I think that's the important piece. Last time we saw Ted Burton, that wonky play in the 11th inning last night just before midnight I mean, so much happened in those extra frames to have that ball carry them the way that it did down the third baseline towards the bag with Peyton Powell right on top of it if you're a fan of the Longhorns Feel like it was an unlucky scenario, fluky scenario. If you're a fan of the Aggies, well, you loaded the bases. You found a way. This one served down the right field line. Teddy Burton aboard, racing around first. Here comes the throw in. It's offline. And a one-out double, the 13th of the season for Ted Burton. Well, you make your own luck, and... Talk about being able to go get a pitch on the outer half of the plate. Just a great job of getting the foot down, exploding from the backside, and then being aggressive on the base pass, knowing you see the ball right in front of you in right field. That's all your decision as a base runner. No need to pick up anybody. That's all you deciding to be aggressive, getting yourself in the scoring position. Blake Marshall remains in the bullpen for Louisiana. Left-hander. Up and about tossing. Just in case. Hayden Shot, Senior from Newport Beach, California. Has a hit in two games. Aggies with their first runner in scoring position. 2 0. Walked him on four straight. All <laughs> Chan alive and well. Here's Ali Camarillo. Runners at first and second. It feels like Teddy Burton's been in the middle of every A&M rally this weekend. Smooth operator at shortstop, Ali Camarillo.
Shaq Burton back to second. Ted told us after the game one victory against Grambling, coming in from Michigan. Three seasons in Ann Arbor in the Big Ten. His first postseason environment in College Station blew him away. Exceeding expectations. Inside, and Ollie will dance out. I don't know what kind of attendance Michigan baseball gets. Big Ten, not necessarily a baseball league. It's nothing compared to this. No offense to our friends in the Maize and Blue, <laughs> mind you. Straight facts here. Good take by Camarillo. We see Christie already establishing the inner part of the plate against righties and lefties. That opens up his off speed. Allows him to get a little bit more chase on the outer half. Looks like Slosh trying to call time here. Aggies in their maroon jerseys today with the white trim and the gray. All of that, it's two and two. Fouled away. Burden at second, shot at first. Fighting Texas Aggies. Strike three called. And the punch out recorded for Christie. And Coach Jim Slosnagel not happy about that one. That's a fastball in the outer half of the plate. Give Torres some credit back there for framing that one up. He's done a nice job all weekend behind the dish. And if he's going to be getting them that far off, Looking at a lot of freeze ups from the Texas A&M hitters. That is a big moment right there. And you saw how Torres framed it beautifully. He's had himself quite a day. Here's Caden Sorrell. First pitch strike. He asked Coach Schloss back on Thursday. There's one guy on this roster, on this team, that maybe isn't getting the kind of pub. But he will be getting that he should be getting. Sorrell was the first name. He discussed. Like his defense has been great in the outfield. Didn't know if he could handle the bat as quickly as he has. And he's been big for us. We saw that last night with the home run. And it was that homer that tied it up after Texas had Mojo on its side, it felt like, for the first five or six innings. And Sorrell. Over to second. Look at the force out there. Good play by Taylor. Over to DeBarge. Bottom of the James Madison. Makes some havoc in the Riley Regional. Caleb Stelly into left field. And right pass for Hovac. Now digging for second. He'll slide in safely without a throw. Hey, Grohovac was playing pretty far in, maybe even with the third base bag. Takes a pretty big hop over there at third base, and Stelly gets himself around the first base bag. You see it take that hop right there, right in front of him. A little unbalanced going after it, but got yourself a, a man in scoring position. 12th double of the season for Caleb Stelly. Leadoff man aboard for the second straight inning for the Raging Cajuns. Senior from Oregon, John Taylor. Yavapai College transfer. Also attended Salt Lake Community College.
Shane Sedeo. The future very bright for number 38, maroon and gray. Punted straight up in the air in foul territory, and Grahovac could not catch up to it. I know as a hitter, you try to bunt, move this runner over to third, most likely one deaden it towards third base, but you also have first base playing way back. Could be a situation where he takes it with him and maybe bunts for a hit in this, this sequence. Got second base way back, playing in the grass in Chestnut. Balls and a strike. Number one national seat, Tennessee, now pouring it on. Southern Miss. Win for the balls. Push them through to the Supers. Payoff pitch from Shane Sedeo. On the way, bunted towards first base, but right back to the mound. 1-3 sacrifice to advance the runner to third, and now Caleb Stelly, 90 feet away from the first run of the night. Yeah, Taylor doing his job of giving himself up, being able to move the runner over. You could tell he was definitely thinking about trying to get it past the pitcher, but priorities to move that runner. Now you got a runner on third, less than two outs, infield back. Duncan Pastor. Hitting 500 this weekend. He's had some big moments. from Division II, Nova Southeastern. It's one thing we saw Louisiana doing a little bit more of in that game against Texas. We just saw trying to bunt for a hit, trying to move a guy over. You see a sacrifice squeeze right there. Seems like they're being a little more aggressive with the small ball game, trying to obviously not get eliminated and get your runs early. Two away. Pastor strikes out. Yes, and this is that back foot slider going down and into the righty. Just a tough pitch to get to. A lot of vertical horizontal break on that pitch. A big spot. And a big bat. Jose Torres swinging for the fences. Crushed one off the scoreboard against Texas. And three run homer blew that game wide open. That ball hit Torres. The bat came around. Yeah, that's when you're just selling out on the fastball. <laughs> that thing came sliding back towards him. Two strikes you look for. Sadeo to expand the zone a little bit here. Maybe go to that slider down or that fastball up. Struck him out. No. He foul tipped it straight down into the dirt.
96 with the heater. Go up to change the eye level of the hitter. Appel's got to be really good back there, keeping this in front. Probably go back down to that slider, down and in. Appel on the outside corner. Torres fights that one off. I mean, that was a KBO bat flip that we saw from <laughs> Torres, wasn't it? Sure was. I would know. A couple years in the Korean baseball organization. Torres past the mound. Tricky play. Camarillo. Yes. Day is it? Where are we? <laughs> Travis Chestnut will lead things off. And bunts it foul. Senior second baseman. Temple College transfer, played for the Leopards there. By the state of Texas in stolen bases in high school one season. Perfect in that department this year, 13 for 13. Is that more of an art or a science in your opinion? Art or a science? I the stolen bag. I think it's a little bit of both, right? First of all, you've got to have the skills, some speed. But then you've got to know when to go. You've got to be smart about your opportunities to, to take a bag. You've got to have an idea as to how the pitcher is delivering. You've got to know which pitchers are slower to home plate. You've got to know which ones seem to tip off something that let you know they're going to home plate as well. So that's a little bit more of the science behind it. Christie's coming to home plate now, and Chestnut fouls it off. And there's certain guys that are just more aggressive than others, right? There's guys with great speed, and you see them get thrown out all the time. But it's the ones that are aggressive, willing to go, but also smart about getting the right lead, knowing when to get a bigger lead. All that comes into play. Payoff pitch, hammered foul. It's back to the top of the order after Chestnut. Ninth pitch of the at bat coming. Hovac in the on deck circle. And it is amazing if you think about it from a Texas AM perspective. Aggies 2 0, beating their arch rival last night in extra innings with Rehovac, Laviolette, Appel, and Chestnut without a hit in two games. Torres back to the dugout to have his equipment checked. Yeah, to your point, you feel like there's a little more offense in there for Texas A&M as far as what they're capable of doing. We know they came into this regional not necessarily swinging the bats the way that they had most of the season. Well, it felt like most of that conversation centered around Braden Montgomery. He's four for ten. And broke out of that May slump, it feels like, pretty early. Right. Here at Bluebell. And a three, two, low and away. Chestnut aboard. Second walk issued by David Christie. And we 
told you the kind of damage Chestnut can inflict on the base paths. 13 for 13 in that stolen base department this season. And he will work a sizable lead right out of the gate. And he goes, the secondary break, and not in time. Yeah, this is just the delay steal, we call it. Is you just trying to get a normal secondary, you fake like you're giving a normal secondary, and you just go. Also, ball in the dirt, that helped him in a major way as well. Aggies with a runner in scoring position. Grohovac skies this one towards left. Ballpark will hold it. And Higgs corrals it for out number one. Chase Laviolette. Fly down to right field in the first inning. Just dipped down to 311. He has walked five times in two plus games. Feels like he's just missing some pitches. A lot of times as a hitter, when you feel like you're just missing it, I'm going to try to make the adjustment of either trying to feel like you're or telling yourself to get on top a little bit more. Maybe that'll even out the swing or let the ball travel a little bit more. Trying to think opposite field. Don't think about pulling. Dose of fastballs for Christie to start. He's throwing that pitch about 60% of the time. Slider at 25. Some late break there. Gets away from Torres. And the throw to third not in time. The outfield here. At least offer up a sacrifice fly at the very least. Chestnut gets to third on the wild pitch. Infield comes in. Three and one to count to Laviolette. I mean, that was actually a crafty slide, if you think about it as well, to not. Yeah, I think have that was, left hand be tagged. I think he was attempting the swim move, but the, the knee blocked his hand. Good baseball play. Reset the pitch clock. Infield on the grass. Popped up left side of the infield. Now foul territory. Amade has it. Comes down to Braden Montgomery in a scoreless game, top of the third inning. He struck out his first time up in the first. Well, Chestnut may have grabbed the attention of Christie there, dancing down the third baseline for a split second. To left field, a base hit, and Texas A&M strikes first. Eighty-second RBI of the season for Braden Montgomery. That leads the SEC. He just hits the ball hard, man. It's a changeup that stays middle. 
and we talked about it, not trying to get big. He came into this regional trying to be smart and selective, staying short, with compact with the swing. 107 off the bat, a rocket to left brings in the first run of the game. And the bubbles are flying here in College Station. First pitch strike to Appel. Took a video last night in that 11th inning. And it changed the horizon. There were so many bubbles flying around. Drilled in the right field. Broussard up with it, digging for third and sliding in safely will be Montgomery. So the Aggies go first to third, back-to-back -back knocks, and Appel has his first hit of the weekend. This is another changeup, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he turns it over, a little down in the zone, but stays up enough for Appel. Puts his best swing on it right there. Brave Montgomery going first to third. Not even slowing up around second. Showing off his wheels as well. And here's Mr. Burton. And I mean, he has been in it. Doubled in the second, his fifth hit of this regional. And the batting average approaching 300. Popped up foul territory, but angling towards the seats and about two rows deep, nearly a play made by LaFleur. Well, Roy, this is what leadoff walks will do to you, right? You let one of the fastest men on the field out here get to first base by freebie. He's able to get to second on a delay steal, then reads ball in the dirt, gets himself over to third, makes it easier for Braden Montgomery, rocket to left. And you keep the momentum going. Good swings. Runner goes from first. And Christie a strike away from getting out of this jam. A couple of tussles in the ACC with NC State leading JMU by a run late. And Clemson leading Coastal Carolina by a run in the eighth inning. Runner goes again from first. That pitch way behind Burton. It bounces off the backstop. And how Montgomery didn't come home, I'll never know. I don't know if he assumed that it hit Burton. Or just lost focus for a second, but... That's just a mental mistake right there from Braden Montgomery that you don't see too often as a base runner. Well, my assumption initially was that it hit him because it was so far off target. Two in scoring position for Texas A&M. And that one does hit him. Bases are loaded. And Burton had something to say towards the mound. And that's going to require a conversation by this veteran umpiring crew. Now, Darren Hyman quickly motioned to his colleagues to meet him near the mound. Yeah, and I don't think the only one run being offered to Texas A&M, you've almost gone unscathed. High leg kick from Christie. Strike one. Now the changeup works nothing in two. Shot walked his first plate appearance. One hit in two games.
Shot a pretty big acquisition out of the transfer portal. Two years at Columbia, a couple of seasons at Cypress College. He's ranked in the top 100 transfers according to D1 Baseball. Line towards right and a jumping grab made by Broussard. And the Aggies finished strong in a 9-6 victory. Matt Deggs were making, returning and making his debut back at the ballpark where he was an assistant coach for those seasons under Russ Childress. Now back for a second time tonight. Connor Higgs will lead things off. 9-1 and 2 for the Raging Cajuns out of the Sun Belt. And Sadeo makes quick work of Higgs. And that's exactly what you want. You want your pitcher to come out and get back to throwing strikes, immediately getting to work. He's been sitting in the dugout for a minute. But if you can go out there and carry that same momentum you had in the top of the inning to the defensive side of baseball, that's going to be huge. Rip down the right field line, and that's a fair baseball. LaFleur digs for second. Here comes the throw. Not in time. Montgomery with the cannon in right field. And they're going to want to take a look at this. Well, we talked about all of Braden Montgomery's tools being on display. First of all, this ball is rocketed to right. The floor with a great piece of hitting. And then Braden Montgomery showing off the hose. Just bare hand off the wall in a seed to second base. Camarillo tries to place the tag on him, but LaFleur with a great slide there. Best angle here. Boy, a similar play with what we were talking about at third, where one hand comes in past the bag, the tag applied. Right. And it was close. And the call at second is confirmed. So two extra base hits now for Louisiana. One by Stelly, the next by LaFleur. 16th double of the season for the first team all Sun Belt Conference performer. And Braden Montgomery gave it everything he had. I love how LaFleur put the head down. <laughs> He's, he almost didn't even look at second base. He's like, I'm, I'm going somewhere, and I'm going there fast. Fast indeed. Ryan Broussard, Jr. Offset foul, nothing in two. Well, Broussard, 1-3 sacrifice. Advancing LaFleur, his first plate appearance. Three hits this weekend. And the home run, a three-run shot against Texas earlier today. Serves this one over to second. Knocked down by Chestnut. They'll get the out at first. LaFleur moves to third. Well, Chestnut saves a run with the glove work. Yeah, this ball's hit pretty hard. 103 off the bat, and Chestnut with the great dive, extending his body, and then making the great throw over to first base. Tough part is stopping it, but you also got to make a good throw over there as well. You said it, stopped from a game-tying run coming in. Kyle DeBarge, drilled to left field, that's down, we are tied at one. A hop off the wall, DeBarge digs for second. And the throw! Was dropped. Runners safe, 19th double of the season by Kyle DeBarge, and here comes Louisiana. Well, we've seen DeBarge swinging it like this this past weekend. He gets extended on a slider. That's rope to left, bringing in another run, but now you start to see the aggressiveness from both teams. Neither team is holding back as far as their base running and doing a great job of 
trying to get the extra base. Three doubles already for the Ragin' Cajuns. Liamade, 0 for 1. Cleanup hitter. On the outside corner for strike one. Well, it seems like this second time around, they're seeing Sadeo a little bit better, knowing what he has to offer. That first time can be tough, especially with him. A lot of times you don't see pitchers on that right side of the rubber that much. So that can kind of throw your deception off as far as seeing the baseball. But now they've adjusted to it, starting to take better swings. Sadeo settles in for a minute. Maggie fans on their feet. Full count. Tennessee Volunteers on the verge of punching their ticket to the Supers. Georgia's come back against Georgia Tech in Athens to tie it at five. On the outside corner and a called strike three. The punch out retires Amade. But Louisiana ties this game up at one. The A&M dugout and right first things first. Congrats on last night the start in this regional. Tell us about the immaculate inning. Did you know when you were on the mound that that was what was happening? And what was that experience like? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, guys. And it was it was really cool. We had one earlier this year where I got eight of nine to it and got to the last pitch, and the guy flew out to center. So it was cool to get it this time. And I just kind of I think it was in the back of my mind once I got the first two strikeouts. And uh, it was pretty cool. It was the first time. It, all year where I've kind of come off the mound like smiling and, and got in the dugout started laughing about it just because it was something that doesn't happen very often and then check check Twitter when I when I got done and saw that there were actually two last night so that was pretty cool it was amazing did your pitching coach Max Wiener know that that was an immaculate inning when you got back to the dugout I, I thought he did so I got in and, and he was fired up and all of a sudden I sit down and like three minutes later he comes up and he's like dude that was an immaculate inning and I was like, yeah, that's why we're all going crazy. <laughs> but he was just super locked in where it didn't even cross his mind. But then he noticed. So, so then we celebrated for a little bit. <laughs> that's awesome. Ryan, tell me a little bit about the rivalry between Texas, right? You going into the game, what are those emotions like? And is there any pressure on the line as far as when you go out there and throw that first pitch? Yeah, I don't think there was any, any extra pressure going into it, I think. One of the big things was being grateful, not only that we got to play in a rivalry game, which is super important for not only our university, but our fans and everybody that was here, but being grateful to, to be back in a, in a postseason atmosphere, like like missing last year, you miss out on, on what postseason baseball feels like. And, and it's something special that you can't even really put into words. So I think the combination of it being the postseason, it being a rivalry game, which meant a lot. and. And it being a really important game in a regional, that winner's bracket game super important. So I think all that going into it was just, it just made it super exciting. Well, and we, excitement can feel like nerves sometimes, but, but just being grateful for the opportunity last night. As a player, what do you appreciate the most about the atmosphere that we witnessed yesterday? Is it the noise, just the pageantry, all of the above? Because this was our first time broadcasting a game in the postseason here in College Station. And we just literally, didn't say a word for a lot of that time and just soaked in every moment. What's it like from your perspective? Yeah, it, it, it's awesome. I mean, we play in front of the best fan base in the country, I truly believe. And, and last night was probably the best college atmosphere I've ever seen, not only in person, but, but also on TV or checking YouTube videos from the past. Like, like that was the elite of the elite. And just the passion our fans bring, like, they're not just loud and they're not just here, but but they're into the game, they're engaged, they know what's going on, and, and they know baseball, and they love being here and they love us. It felt like they impacted the game, especially late last night in that eighth inning and maybe 
into the 11th. Would you agree with that? No doubt. And they've done it all year. They've been they've been fantastic. They've been here whether whether it's a four o'clock midweek game or. There's a drive deep right field and it's gone. Caden Sorrell gives the Aggies the lead right back. And let the bubbles fly. Caden Sorrell puts a, a perfect swing on this. 108 off the bat, 430 feet. Yeah, check this one out again. This is just over the heart of the plate. You see him get the barrel out in front, backside through it, quick leg kick, release it, and that thing is long gone. We've seen some mammoth shots this weekend. Ryan, they're showing you on replay right now with the one up in the air. I think that bounced off the road 430 feet away. That was impressive, and he's had an impressive first year, right? No doubt. Yeah. Yeah, he has. He's been great. I mean, from the start of the year to now, just the growth he's had, not knowing what his role would be, kind of being in and out of it early, and then kind of solidifying his spot. And, and he's great, and it's kind of funny seeing him go deep. And then, then you have Chestnut lay the bunt down, and <laughs> just I feel like that just sums up our team. We can do it so many different ways. Ryan, talk to us about last night. What was working for you? How did you feel on the mound as far as your arsenal, and how did you have the success that you had last night? Yeah, I thought I thought early was just okay. Kind of kind of struggled to, to be in the zone and be a little effective early, but finally got settled in and, and felt like I got better as we went. I mean, Coach Max talks a lot about how pitching isn't, isn't a game of perfect, it's a game of compete, and I thought that exa that's exactly what we did yesterday, and especially this time of year in, in the postseason, it, it's not always about how it looks, it's, it's more so about competing, giving your team a chance, and, and ultimately coming out with a win. Well, Ryan, we appreciate the time today. We'll let you get back to enjoying this game. You brought your team some good luck there. We bring you on the homer by Sorrell. You're back in business with the lead, and buddy, best of luck rest of this uh, regional and perhaps next weekend into Omaha as well. Awesome, thank you guys. Appreciate you. Pitching change for the with the home run last night. This one tonight. Meaningful situations where momentum is teetering. Yesterday with Texas, tonight with Louisiana. Two very important at bats for the Aggies this season. You know it's only a matter of time for the top two in this lineup start to warm up their bats. Grohovac and Laviolette coming up in order. Pluno started our first game Friday. Raging Cajuns and Longhorns. Transferred to Louisiana from Madison area, area Communicata. Ball one to Grohovac. Went to play in the Division II World Series during his time at Madison area. Remember it was Christy that came in to replace Fluno on Friday. He'll flip those roles tonight. And it was Christy that gave up the Grand Slam. Jalen Flores. So you can look back this weekend and figure out the big moments. That Grand Slam certainly was one. Last night, Ted Burton's dribbler down to third obviously was another. And Sorrell has been part of those massive swings. His two home runs as well. Down there in the AM dugout. Baby faced assassin. Served to right. Stays up long enough for Bruce Sard. 
the second out of the inning. And that's been Grohovac's weekend in a nutshell. He's had some good A-Bs and some good swings. Not much to show for it just yet. Credit Boussard being in the right spot there. Fluno is pretty quick to home plate. I know Chestnut is, is good with the stolen bases, 13 for 13. Probably look to go more something in the dirt than, than a straight-up steal here. Laviolette just saw the freshman leave the ballpark. He'd love to pull one out of here at 105 miles an hour himself. And he's got the bat and the strength to do it. Big moment for Fluno. First team all SEC center fielder. Hitters count. Well, what Ryan Prager was talking about with the baseball IQ of this fan base, you can feel it. They pause in those moments where they need to pause. They certainly make noise when they need to make noise. Chestnut was leaning the other way and slides in safely. And there's no doubt 12th man impacted that game late last night, shortly before midnight against UT. Now with two strikes, 2-2 two -two count here, more of a situation where you'll see Chestnut Try to steal here, start to see some off speed with two strikes. Trying to get Lavillette chasing something down in the zone. Good opportunity for Chestnut to go. Line towards the gap in right field, and it gets down. Chestnut easily makes it to third. The throw over second base, and that means Lavillette is standing at second. First hit of the weekend for Jace. Yeah, this is a changeup that's down and away. And nice job of staying on the baseball. Really the swing he's been looking for all day. More of that backspin, 109 off the bat. And not the best decision from Broussard. Not sure where he was trying to throw this to. Knowing you're not going to throw Chestnut out at third with his speed. And then he allows LaViolette to get to second. In advance, now you have two runners in scoring position instead of one. Chestnut looked like the road runner, the way those wheels were moving. Beep, beep. You could barely see his feet. Another moment for Braden Montgomery. Single and RBI, and he struck out. Montgomery gets a hold of one. Down the right field line, and that one's gone. Over the Raging Cajuns bullpen. 27th home run of the season. None bigger than that one right there. And the Aggies in business in a 5-1 lead. Well, we talked about Braden Montgomery taking some better at-bats coming into this regional. A better approach at the plate. Frustrated with the strike two call. Thought it was might be a little bit inside. But flushed it, got back in the box and absolutely destroyed a baseball. X, it wasn't a moonshot. That ball was not that high off the ground. It didn't have to be because it was hit so hard.
Check this out again. This is just a little bit of a hanger with two strikes. Too good of a pitch for Braden Montgomery not to do damage on it. Got to go back to May 18th against Arkansas. The last time he hit a home run, and he's got his groove back. Now Braden got his groove back. Bryan College Station Regional. And if the Yankees hold on tonight, look out next weekend. Right back here at Olsen. He did the magic late last night. They don't want to have to go down that road tonight. And a good start with a four-run lead. And Appel, his second hit. Well, and the floodgates opening up here for Texas A&M's offense. Schlossnagel may want to have Ryan Prager on every single broadcast from this point moving forward the rest of the season. Schloss, he'll talk to us mid-game. And sometimes we get a little bit more out of some of these players, and Prager looks like the smartest man in the ballpark. He brought the Aggies a little bit of luck. Pluno's got to find a way to get out of this inning, and Teddy Burton... Doesn't want to let him out. Burton has reached twice. One and one. Well, it just felt like we were waiting for Texas A&M to break out with the bats consistently, right? We know it's an offense that can really get going, but we hadn't quite seen it go to the impact that it's had most of the season. Saw them really string together some good at bats, waiting for some good pitches. And even with two strikes, that's what we call a backbreaker. Doing damage with two strikes can really hurt the opposing pitcher from a mental standpoint. He's now one home run away from tying the team record in a single season of 128. Ripped over to third, knocked down by Amade, and in time, he'll fire it to first. At Texas A&M out in front, the Raging Cajuns. Next, it feels like that team we saw here in the top half of the fourth, the team that was ranked number one in the country for three weeks. Just the slugging, the pure power. And even Travis Chestnut, down at the bottom of the order, an absolute menace what he brings to the table. Yeah, I felt like Texas A&M had to come into this game feeding off of the energy from last night, right? being able to use that momentum, but also the aggressiveness. Saw guys taking the extra base, Chestnut doing a great job with his legs. Defense has already been really crisp. And then the swings start to come. That's what they've been waiting for. Stelly, pop fly to shallow right. And Brady Montgomery grabs it. X, what was this? Delicious dish that uh, Marge just brought us. She just brought us beef bulgogi fries. Never had it before. I now, have no idea what it is. Now, the, the beef bulgogi is a very popular dish in South Korea. And Do you play the Korean I baseball? I played in South Korea, yes. Had bulgogi all the time. But when you put this bulgogi on top of a bed of waffle fries. Crispy fries. You add the coleslaw plus... A little bit of this sweet sauce on here, too. Oh, my goodness. Slow roller over to third. The second out of the end. Crispy fries. Beef is seasoned. I mean, spectacularly. Yes. Beautifully, almost. <laughs> and 
there's like a little spicy mayonnaise something or another. Yes, it's got a it, almost like a spicy mayo type. They've been feeding us too good here, man. The Shout step out. count hasn't been too high for uh, your humble play-by-play -play <laughs> dude over here. Last couple of days. We've been calling a lot of baseball games. Caloric count has been uh, extremely high. <laughs> and that becomes an issue on the flight back home tomorrow. Good thing we aren't in Louisiana either, huh? We would have had some thinking about that food over there too. Some red beans and rice, some gumbo. Maybe a little boil of some kind. A little shrimp and grits, crawfish. Let me stop. Shane Sadeo. I think he wants to come in here and fire as many strikes as quickly as possible, and he's doing that in this inning. Chop the chestnut. Easy play for the second baseman. And the first one, two, three inning for the Ag performance in the start earlier today against the Texas Longhorns. And Chase, you guys eliminated UT, much to the delight of Texas A&M fans. Final score was 10 to 2. What did you have working so well when you made that start this afternoon? Um, well, I've been kind of dealing with a soreness a little bit. So I really was focusing on just hitting spots, uh, using my off speeds. Uh, making sure I was locating because they can all hit. I mean, they're a really good team. So, uh, so yeah, just using a lot of off speeds, just working, working the counts, and got the job done. And you're enjoying a diet coke there. We didn't realize <laughs> that you like the diet caffeination. Uh, that's Coach Deg's specialty, you know. So I gotta <laughs> gotta have in a hand while I'm doing an interview. Uh, talk to me about your season in general, just personally. What are some of the things that you felt like you got a lot better at, or some of the things that you almost turned from weaknesses into strengths this year yeah um well that's all thanks to gunner i mean he's the best coach ever been around uh off speeds and high school weren't weren't there all the time so that's really what we focused on all fall and just used it during the spring and it turned out pretty good well you coming back to the state of texas you're from cyprus and obviously eliminating texas playing the aggies tonight i would imagine that these kinds of games mean a little bit more to you it, it does, for sure. Now, talk to us a little bit about... Hayden Schott puts a charge into that one, and it's gone. Hayden Schott leaves the ballpark. And the Aggies strike again. It's 6-1. to one. See shot getting into the fun as well with this swing straight away center. Chase, I was just about to ask you from your point of view, what do you guys feel like you need to do to get back into this game and give yourselves a chance to hopefully be able to continue to battle on another day? I mean, we just need to put bats together. I mean, they're starters. He's a legit pitcher. I mean, 92, 95, lefty. Uh, we just need to work counts, you know, play a little small ball, just do what we do. I mean, I think we're trying to do a little too much right now, just slow things down a little bit and just do what we do. I think it's a talented team. They've done that to a lot of squads this year. They've yet to lose to a non-conference foe. The atmosphere this weekend, you've seen it, you've experienced it, you've been a part of it, and also witnessed it. Yep. Um, when I was younger, I always, I always came to these games. So, I mean, I'm used to it, but if you haven't ever been here before, I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. And what's been the best part for you just being a part of this Louisiana team and throughout uh, the course of this year what what have you felt has been the coolest part of being about this uh, with this team that's had so much success this year i just love the guys man i mean i came here and the second i got here it felt like home uh everyone's playing together i mean there's not a single person that i mean it, it's just a whole team mentality i mean coach stag is he preaches it all the time just stay humble and just 
to just play together because, I mean, we can't really, we just, we just, we just got to play together. Uh, Chase, we appreciate your time, buddy. We'll let you get back to the dugout. Good luck the rest of the way here in College Station. Oh, I appreciate you guys. Thanks, Chase. Good sport. And, of course, that's the kind of things that happen when you bring in an interview mid-game. Player for one team, and what does the other team do? Promptly, Hayden shot. Straight away center, right off the batter's eye. I mean, that was a shot. <laughs> Stelly just kept going back and back. It seemed like it had that backspin carry towards center field. I mean, put a charge into that, but also just we're seeing it almost as a theme of the hitters not getting too big, right? A lot of these swings, short and compact, it's almost like the pitcher is supplying the power. And that's what you're trying to do as a hitter. Don't feel like you have to do anything extra. Just allow yourself to take the same swing that you take in the cage. That's what we're seeing from them right now. Well, Hayden shot thrilled with this plate appearance. And he got every inch of that one. He just got extended. He's halfway up the batter's eye right there. Chop to Taylor. The reaction was priceless rounding the bases. <laughs> I mean, the fist pump, the high step. He's getting ready to run somebody over if they got in his way. 128 home runs. That ties a program single season mark. Jim Schlossnagel and our conversations with him leading into this regional. He said, you know what? Our chase rates were through the roof back into the regular season. That was not like us as Chestnut comes up empty. That was their focal point coming in to the NCAA tournament. Let's be selective. Let's not chase balls out of the zone. If we just start there and we have our focus and we are well rested, which they were, after Hoover, great things will happen. I think that's what we've seen. Yeah, and a lot of that is trust as a hitter. You know, trusting that you're going to be able to recognize pitches, trusting that you're not going to get beat. It's all a balance as a hitter. And when you don't feel like you have the confidence, that's when you don't trust yourself and you try to do too much. You try to go get a pitch. You try to swing out of the zone, try to cover too much of the plate. That is hitters, we try to put the plate in thirds, middle out, middle, middle in, and try to understand where your best strengths are on a specific part of the plate. And everything depends on the pitcher, but at the same time, you got to do your job as a hitter. Now two and two. I think Chestnut thought it was a violation on him, but it was on the pitcher. We've seen a couple of those called this weekend, a full count. It's a big moment last night for the Aggies. It was Hayden shot that had the two strike count. Did not climb in the box appropriate amount of time and Chestnut draws the walk to extend the frame. Texas A&M is going to look to continue to put the pressure on. We've seen Chestnut use his legs all season long. That's what happens when you continue to walk the the fastest guy on Texas A&M. And a grand total of four engines on the front of that train. Chugging right through and right past the right field wall. And not through it, but behind it. Oh, 
Well, several teams have now punched their ticket into the Supers. Give you those updates. Including number one overall national seed, Tennessee. Number six national seed, Clemson, also winning the winner of the Stillwater Regional between Florida and Oklahoma State. Gators got to win two against the Cowboys to advance. They're currently deadlocked at one up in Stillwater. NC State is also made its way to next weekend. Do expect there will be a heavy SEC and ACC flavor. And of course, the winner of this regional matches up with the winner of the Santa Barbara regional. And how about this? Chestnut thrown out. And Torres with a statement toss. Of getting one pitch in one spot and just trusting their swing. We have an equipment issue. And one with the Raging Cajuns earlier. 6-1 our score. Texas A&M. Here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Jose Torres leading things off. Jackson Appel has everything situated. Appreciate Chase Morgan joining us. Talking through that shot home run. And great commentary as well from Ryan Prager in the previous inning. I don't know what his GPA is, but it was higher than mine when I graduated college. <laughs> feel confident in saying that. Yeah, it's always good when you can hear the young players really express their thoughts and be able to communicate it in such a great way. You can tell that he enjoys it. Has a good sense of being able to vocalize his thoughts. I love that. Well, his immaculate inning yesterday would be something I always remember. Just never had seen that, never had called it in person. Well, the steps of the Cajuns dugout. I hadn't seen it either in person. And I could tell that Ryan, as soon as he got done knew that he had had an immaculate inning and probably because he had mentioned that he had been pretty close before earlier right. in the season yeah and he tried to get it then he said he got to the eighth pitch and if you don't know what the immaculate inning is it's it's a perfect inning face the first batter three straight strikes you're out second batter and in the third no balls and obviously, you're not lining out, grounding out, flying out anywhere. The immaculate inning with the three straight strikeouts. It makes it even sweeter that he knew it. He knew it when it happened. And his pitching coach, Max Weiner, didn't know it until about five <laughs> minutes later. It's like, hey, what do you think we were celebrating down here for, Max? <laughs> Come on, coach. Hey, that was an immaculate inning. Yeah, we know. Torres stays alive. Well, it's really one of the reasons, too, why they have a good amount of pitching left, right? You think about him being able to give them some length yesterday because of how efficient he was in the strike zone. And I know he's done it all season long, limiting the walks, but it just tells you how important it is to not let guys on first base without earning it. And Wiener, to his credit, you know, the undercurrent of this A&M program this year. Oh, and that went right into the dugout and hit, it appeared, either an assistant coach or a player. Everybody's OK. Like we gave you the numbers moments ago, 128 home runs. That ties the 1999 Aggies. Torres strikes out, looks back towards the mound. Everybody loves the long ball, including announcers. One more look at that strikeout. 
just heat at the top of the zone. Something he's used all season long, and it's just tough to lay off. Four strikeouts tonight for Sadeo. The power numbers have been there. A little dip at the end of the season. But in terms of AM's pitching and its arms, Max Wiener's arrival from the Mariners and the ERA going from 5.67 a year ago to 3.85 this year. Strikeout to walk ratio has improved dramatically. It puts you in a different conversation potentially next weekend and even deeper into Omaha because yeah, the bats you figure are going to come back to life at some point and they have tonight. But if you got the arms, you got a chance to win a national championship. And that's the goal here for Coach Sloss. You need pitching. You need pitching depth. And you need to be able to de develop pitching. That's what Max has done. That's what he was doing with the Mariners before he came here. Think about Logan Gilbert, George Kirby, Brian Wu. And a Texas A&M Aggie himself, Bryce Miller, all a group that pitched for the Mariners and still pitching for the Mariners and were, have developed in that organization. And pitching wins championships. You think about teams have the best staffs, the best arms. Tennessee has already punched his ticket to the Supers. East Carolina still fighting its way. You see Santa Barbara also in that conversation, among others. But you look at the teams that have won the last four national titles, all SEC programs. They rank in the upper echelon of pitching in a number of key categories. And the catch made on the move. Back here in the Bryan College Station Regional Final, 6-1. to one. Texas A&M with a lead against Louisiana. Our Hovac will lead things off and booted at second by Taylor. E4 has Grahovac on first. Yeah, maybe just a little lackadaisical on field in this ground ball that's coming up the middle. Got a little bit of that top spin on it. Just didn't quite stay down on it. Looked like he picked the glove up a little too early. Gets right by him. Avulet, one for three, single and a score to run. Mentioned the last four national champions, all from the Southeastern Conference. Got to go back to 2018. Find a team from outside the SEC. It was Oregon State, head coach Mitch Canham. Did a great job in Corvallis, former national champion ball player up in Oregon State. Four straight out of the SEC. Four different teams, too. I'm not sure what that tells you, other than the conference is really deep and really good. But you had LSU and then Ole Miss and then Mississippi State. Gators won in 2017. It was interesting listening to David Pierce's post-game press conference after being eliminated today. That'll get down, Laviolette. Back-to-back hits for Jace tonight. David Pierce was asked, hey, you're jumping into the SEC. What do you have to do to make sure that you guys are ready to compete at Texas? He said, well, we need more speed up and down our lineup. They went through a small laundry list of things, but it's going to be a wake-up call for A&M's rival. We had 11 teams invited to the NCAA tournament this year out of the SEC. That is a NCAA tournament record. Big 12 has been good, but there's no layups 
in college baseball in the Southeastern Conference. Yeah, well, you know, I feel like that's one of the things is you're always looking for athleticism. I mean, it kind of was. As you look at Marshall's numbers. Yeah, Marshall just got to stay away from the walks. Does a nice job with this fastball, 92-93 from the left side. Slider changeup as well. Aggies threatening again. No one out in the top of the six. For Hovac at second, Ovulet at first. And the batter is Braden Montgomery. You and I were kind of looking for an energy drink earlier today. We need to go and ask him what he's been enjoying. Three hopper over to third. They'll get the double play as Montgomery unable to beat out the throw. And a step ahead of myself, Montgomery wants them to take a look at it. And they will. Well, this is one of the reasons why you bring in Blake Marshall, try to turn Braden Montgomery over to the right side, in which the numbers are a little bit not quite as good as the left side. That one, just from right there, it looked like he might have beat it off a of first glance. Well, Braden did not hesitate in asking for the command center to take a look. I thought he beat it out. He yeah, did. He beat it. Well, this call will be overturned. That is indisputable video evidence where I come from. And where anybody comes from. Yeah, it's pretty clear right there. Well, the umpiring crew has gotten it right, it feels like, in real time, more times than not this weekend. Challenge successful. And here's Jackson Appel. Only one away with runners at the corners. Like Marshall started his collegiate career at Hines Community College in Mississippi. Get to the backstop and allow Montgomery to get into second. Grohovec was ready to score there, but the ball just bounces so quickly back to Torres. It's a good read from him at third base right there. Got the brick back there in the backstop that allows that ball to bounce back rapidly. Section 203 getting rowdy here at the ballpark. It's been festive over there. Especially last night. Schloss was great. We mentioned it earlier today when we saw the attendance figures posted in his postgame press conference. 7,500 for that UT game. So I wonder who that person was that counted that. There's no way that's all that was here. You're crazy. The Pell switch hitter, more effective as a left handed hitter, 392. Or it's left handed pitching, I should say. Senior catcher. Three and two. Yeah, infield's in here with one out. You're just trying to get something to the outfield. See, everybody's kind of even, almost with the dirt, trying to cut down that run at home. Appel draws the walk. Aggies have him loaded. Hovac at third, Montgomery at second base. Pell at first. Guess who? Aggies up by five and starting to get greedy.
Marshall here, he's just looking for the ground ball. If you can get him to roll something over, third base, shortstop. Try to get yourself out of the inning with the ground ball here. Burton was not cheated with that swing. Underrated bat. This AM lineup, and he comes up empty, and Marshall records the strikeout. Yeah, really, this is a huge pitch right here from Marshall, doing a nice job of breaking it off. Great location down. Starts it looking like a strike, and then just dives down in the zone. A huge pitch right there with bases loaded. Two away for Hayden Shot. Last time we saw him. Hit the batter's eye. Well, Marshall can get out of this inning. Keep the Aggies right where they are. You feel like four frames to work with. Stranger things have happened. But Marshall trying to give his offense maybe some momentum. Two quick strikes on shot. My favorite stat of the weekend for Louisiana player Marshall in his high school in Louisiana is the school record holder for tackles in a single season. 162 and how about a strikeout here in back to back fashion as well using it up in the zone just overpowering guys. Broussard fights off that pitch, and it's down for a knock. Leadoff man aboard for Louisiana. And Broussard, his first hit of the night. And X, you and I were talking going out to that break. The job that Marshall did there was critical in a number of different ways. A, the back-to-back -back strikeouts with the bases loaded. Of course, you don't yield a run, but that next run when you're trailing by four or five, feels a little bigger, and the game starts to, as you put it, get away from you at that juncture. Right, absolutely, and I felt like, you know, if there was anything given to Texas A&M at that point, as a team, you start to feel like, ah, oh, you almost, a weight that it just continues to add onto your shoulders. When you see the other team tacking on more runs, it's almost like, man, it's going to be tough for us to stay in this one, just mentally. So with Marshall strikeouts, Broussard single, the Sun Belt Player of the Year in the box. New life, at least for the moment, for head coach Matt Deggs and his raging Cajuns. The issue is Sadeo has been on point as the Aggie starter. Now it's 77 pitches. And the barge tried to fight it off and could not. This has been one of the toughest pitches because it just dives down back foots the righties and it looks like a fastball out of hand and once you choose to swing it's already too late to hold it up just see it kind of spin around there we haven't really seen the bars take those types of swings now Sadeo's had a heck of a season no mistake about that but you get into the postseason and you start posting numbers and that's what you're looking for if you're a fan of the Aggies. Close play at first. But Coach Schloss will tell you, I mean, trying to win a national championship. He's trying to build a monster here. They want to build a stadium about twice the size of Bluebell Park. There's a big article on 
ESPN.com late in the week about it. Another hit for Amade into right field. Digging for third. Here's the throw. Not in time. Brady Montgomery with another laser out in right field. Well, Broussard for a minute was in danger. And they will look at this. Well, first of all, Brayton got to this ball extremely quick, did a great job of being able to hustle and knew once he saw the runner start to take that, take that go ahead to third. Hovick might have got that tag down. First of all, How about get, the ups? get up. Didn't get the tag down. He may have gotten him here. There. I think he did, but it's just tough to tell from right there. There also was some hesitation from Broussard coming around second base. That might have cost him if they... Notice I said think. <laughs> well, the only thing that really gives Montgomery a chance, well, there's two things. His, first of all, his arm is ridiculous. And the runner in Broussard actually stops for a second, slows up right there. Just this quick stutter step to see if he fielded it correctly. And then this is a ridiculous arm from Montgomery coming from right field. We've seen that twice tonight. For Louisiana runners at the corners, just one away. And this game's starting to slow down a bit. And as we indicated, Blake Marshall's back-to-back -back strikeouts generating a little momentum for the first time. For the If Cortez averages 98 with a fastball, that means he's throwing a lot harder than 98 at times. That's how the law of averages works. Not a lot of wasted movement on that release either. Caleb Stelly. Off speed at 87. Caleb one for two. Double back in the second. Game still within reach for Louisiana. The thing about Cortez, too, is it's not just swing and miss. He does a great job of getting ground balls. 53% of the time, he gets guys hitting the ball on the ground, so he uses his defense as well. Ball and two strikes. Swung on and missed that pitch in the dirt. And Cortez effective already. Yeah, this is a slider nowhere near the strike zone. I'm glad they're showing us in slow motion because look how far off that swing is. Just tells you a lot about the bite. Really tough to lay off of that pitch because it looks like it's coming in and you're trying to get ready for 99, 100. And that thing just falls right off the table hard. Two away in the bottom of the sixth. Cortez coming in and quickly stabilizing. You're getting 13 to 16 inches of horizontal break straight down. Tough to get the barrel to it. In the dirt, bounces away, toss back to home. I don't think so. Tag applied, the third and final out. How about Cortez? Time. <laughs> X. I mean, that was the montage going back to really Friday morning, I think, was the first time that it really was that we met Marge. They just brought more. The churros with the whipped cream. There's pecan nuts in here. Chocolate sauce. 
caramel. My goodness. Not too shabby. I'm taking a bite right now. I'm not even playing. And we got the Bluebell ice cream, of course, too, here at Bluebell Park. It's been a great weekend. We've enjoyed it. <laughs> this is hitting. X, if you had to tell us your favorite dish that we've enjoyed here during all these games. Are hey. you the sweet tooth guy? Are you the brisket guy? I'm all of it. Hey, when they brought the brisket, though, something about that tender meat falling right off of kind of the fat. Another drive. Deep right field. And that one's gone. Cabrillo homers to right, and now a new single season home run record by these Aggies. 129 long balls in 2024. Dunk City in the AM dugout. I mean, the swing was just something sweet, something like a churro going opposite field. And he knew he got a lot of that one. He's nice with the glove, but can do it with the bat, too. 7 to 1, AM. So here's Caden Sorrell, and during that last break, we had a visit in the booth outside of our good friend Marge. The baseball that he smashed over the right field wall actually landed on the street. And if you watch the replay, it caromed off the asphalt. This ball was retrieved by our good friend Patrick, who happened to be listening on the radio at the time. Pulled over to the side of the road, saw the ball bounce, put his hazards on, and retrieved the baseball. Talk about outstanding timing <laughs> but talk about a ball that was absolutely hammered second home run of the season for the freshman left field Caden Sorrell watch this thing get out in a hurry and then there's the hop you know it's like that drive you hit off the tee box that is errant and it slices over towards the cart path no, I don't know about that. I think most people know exactly what I'm talking about. Wow. And then it just hops. What a catch from Torres right there. Just selling out his body to get to the wall. Foul territory. Checked out how quick he got rid of the mask. Outstanding. And the collision with a brick wall. That's amazing concentration, first and foremost, the quickness. And then knees up against the wall. That's one of the best catches we've seen this weekend. One of the best defensive plays we'll see in general. Nice round of applause from this Aggie fan base as well. Appreciating that effort and appreciating good baseball. Chestnut sky high. Pops out to Taylor. So Sorrell fouls out. Chestnut pops out. And here's Grahovac. Maybe this is the one component you'd like to get trending back in the right direction. Potentially before next weekend in the Supers, and that's Grahovac's bat at the top of this order. Got involved. Georgia also has punched its ticket out of the SEC to the Super Regional round next weekend, as has Kentucky, the number two overall national seed. Florida has rallied against Oklahoma State. West Virginia off to a good start in the Tucson Regional.
just as we all expected after Arizona went to in barbecue. Four and out of the zone for Martinez. Two and one. State also onto the Supers, winning the Tallahassee Regional down at DeKalser Stadium. Told you about Tennessee. Game seven coming Monday with East Carolina and Evansville. Hovac. Able to draw the walk. And it's Laviolette. Bazana and Oregon State also off to a good start tonight in their regional final in Corvallis. Bazana would be an interesting character if the Beavers make it to Omaha. Originally from Australia, he has put up monster numbers as the Oregon State second baseman. Here in the top of the seventh, two away. Aggies designated the visiting team tonight. So Louisiana with three more frames. Try to get back in it. Team that has battled all season long. Cut on a miss. Laviolette retired on the heat. Rocking this weekend at Bluebell Park. Cortez remains on the mound. And Chris fires a first pitch strike. Jack Martinez on his own and bringing some gas. 96. Feeling a little amped on his end. Nice way to close out that half inning. Oh, UConn getting the job done in the Norman Regional. They're tied at three with OU in a must-win game for the Sooners playing at home. Show you the list of teams that have already clinched their Super Regional appearance. Just a minute. Tennessee, Kentucky, Clemson, Georgia. Florida State, NC State, and Virginia, the only team so far to make it to next weekend that was not a top 16 seed is K-State. Popped up to right. And Montgomery underneath. Every attempted rally for Louisiana has been met with bullpen resistance for the Aggies, from the Aggies. Here's Pastor. X, you got a tour of the baseball facilities today here in Aggie Land. What was that I like? I did. And that was pretty cool. Uh, anytime you get the opportunity to go behind the scenes and see kind of what these guys are working with as far as strength and conditioning, training room, batting cages, 
And of course, I'm looking at it all, and I'm like, this is top notch. And they're telling me they're looking at building a new facility here pretty soon. You were talking about the new stadium that trying to put in play here pretty soon. Along with that comes more facilities, a new clubhouse, new locker room. But that's a nice indoor facility right there, but they want to make everything better here, which I understand because industry standard, everybody's leveling up. And of course, you want to make sure you're not left behind. Another thing that we're talking about too with Max Wiener is a, a whole new pitch, a whole new pitch uh, area where they're able to have pitch design and all that stuff as far as the things that they're looking to do moving forward from a pitching standpoint. And speaking of Max Wiener, trying out on the dugout. The goal is to win not one national title, but multiple and to be the standard. And you can only imagine, you know, the changes that are happening within the SEC and in college sports in general. You build a stadium like that with that kind of capacity. Everybody else is trying to play catch up at that point, and it gives you the advantage in right. recruiting and winning titles, demonstrating commitment. And that was the first thing Coach Schlossnagel told me is, hey, X, remember, we're tearing all that stuff out. What you saw today, yeah. which was pretty nice. I said, I said, Coach, I want to check out the facilities. He said, no problem. But X, just remember, we're tearing all this out. He said, we are way behind other SEC schools on terms of facilities. And I said, well, I wish I had these facilities when I was going to college at UNLV, in which he left right before I got there. The 0-2 to Torres. Outside at 100. Torres has impressed me all weekend, just defensively with the pop offensively. We saw the three-run home earlier today. I know that's a nasty pitch, but that's a young man that's been working behind the plate all day and doing a great job of help leading his team. Yeah, Torres only a junior, too, out of Doral, Florida. Mentioned his career ambition is to manage his own baseball training facility. Doesn't come as a surprise when you watch his effort, his hustle, his production. But he has a nice vibe about him that tells you all that he's about. I Nothing wanna, in two. I want to go back to the first game. I just remember him. I think they had a situation where they had just gotten some runs and couple balls he went out there straight to the mound and you could tell there was emotion in him telling his pitcher hey let's stop fooling around let's get it together and lock in here comes the heat from Cortez no it's the slider on the outer half in the top of the eighth inning Brady Montgomery offensively on point in right field equally as impressive RBI single and a home run that just jettisoned out in a very fast way. Yeah, just a human highlight reel. Seen a couple of great throws from the outfield as well. Showing off all the tools. One of the biggest reasons why Kylie McDaniel has him on the mock MLB draft board at six. Going to the Kansas City Royals. Montgomery, final chapter in his book in College Station has yet to be written. But what we've seen this weekend, and you translate that ahead towards next weekend, potentially in the Supers, if this score holds, there's a chance. He gets this team to Omaha, and the Yankees start doing damage there. 
Hey, the stock could rise that much. The Raging Cajuns that really changed everything about that game. Seven spot went up. The two, three run homers, the bat of Broussard and Torres. Well, Murphy Brooks transferred to Louisiana from TCU where he redshirted. This is senior year of high school with an injury. We've seen a lot of Cypress, Texas players, seems like this weekend. Including Chase Morgan, who we talked to moments ago. Here's Jackson Appel. Line towards left, just short of the track. Connor Higgs, the second out. Teddy Burton. Starter again at first base tonight, one for three. Was also hit by a pitch. Maybe the most amazing component of this weekend, given all the bad weather that has been around us at times. You know, I had to get one more word in about the atmosphere. No rain delays. No storms, at least around College Station, the way that we thought it could be. There was one point yesterday in that first elimination game. I don't ever think we talked about it on air, but it was the ninth inning with Grambling and Louisiana. And the Raging Cajuns were going to win it. We knew it. But with one out in the ninth, there was a lightning strike 11 miles away. And we got the indication from the in-house weather group. And our statistician, Drew DeCryf, wrote it out on the whiteboard as Burton reaches. Lightning strike 11 miles. And we kind of held our breath for a minute because that could have derailed everything the rest of that night. That was it. We made it through unscathed. I'm surprised you weren't on the lightning. Is that something you normally are on, too? Well, I don't have my machine that <laughs> tracks the lightning with me. TSA doesn't let me check it at the airport. So the answer is no. <laughs> They're tracking tornadoes and whatnot. They're tracking balls out of the zone here at Olsen Field. Well, when this chant got going last night, it reached a different decibel level. Two and one.
Popped up foul territory. Head start coming with the runner at first. Low and inside. Shot is aboard. Burton trots down to second base. And if you haven't done so by now, we encourage you to do so now. Point your cell phone right at that QR code, bottom left hand corner of the screen. We encourage you to check out our good friends with Squeeze Play. ESPN Plus subscribers can access that expanded coverage with Squeeze Play. The more Mike Rooney, the better. The more Chris Burke and Matt Schick. Gentlemen, great job all weekend long. I know I speak for all of the country when we say thank you for the information, the effort, and the knowledge being dropped. Literally 24-7 on squeeze play. <laughs> Absolutely. How else are we going to consume so many games at once? Camarillo, the breaking ball. Hammered is short. Force out at second. And the side is retired. Raging Cajun. Back to the top of the order. We'll lead things off for Matt Dex's team. One and two. Chris Cortez remains on the mound. Dugout. Max Wiener, deep sigh. My first reaction if that happened to me down there, I would check to make sure everything is still attached. <laughs> Ball comes in about a thousand miles an hour sometimes. And again, that direction. Caroms off the netting and bounces in. And that's what happens when you have a guy throwing 199. Get some guys a little bit late sometimes. And <laughs> watch your lips over there. Oh, it was you that told me you let the power of the pitch do all the hard work. Absolutely. Barrel meets the ball. It's going to explode off of it based off of what that pitch is doing with the velo. So you've been listening. I listened once or twice in six games. <laughs> Maybe three times, at least on Friday. <laughs> Through the back door, and LaFleur caught looking. Uh, LaFleur, good at bat, just a, a tough pitch to pull, this, pull the, the trigger on. Just kind of backs up and it catches the outer part of the plate. Cortez, man, this guy doing it with the fastball, but then changing speeds well with that slider. And perhaps the final train behind the right field wall.
counted three in the front. One and two the count. Cortez just hit 100 miles an hour. And then 99. Off speed at 88, it's almost unfair. Yeah, you almost just got to tip your cap because talk about changing speeds to 10 miles an hour, but that slider still almost looking like a fastball from the spin. It's an extremely late break to it. See how tight the spin is. It is fun watching this young man do his thing. Now, Texas A&M fans watching what's happening out west in Santa Barbara. This regional matched up with that one, and currently Oregon in the seventh inning with a 3 nothing lead. Beating UC Santa Barbara. And in the bottom of the seventh. in their final season in the Pac-12. Cortez is dialed in. This capacity crowd will tell you the result. Foul territory. And about five feet deep. Just over the wall. Chris Cortez, the one-two once again. Got some good bite and late life to it as well. Caden Sorrell can do it all. And he's only a freshman. Clay Warco, the new Louisiana catcher. Not sure I'll look at Bluebell ice cream the same ever again after this weekend. Here at Bluebell Park. Well, now I'm trying to visit the factory. Oh, it's like that. <laughs> it's like that now. <laughs> I got to see what flavors are being innovated as we speak. Anything that involves more of the cookie as Sorrell strikes out. I would be in favor of that. I mean, like the more cookies you combine, mm -hmm. the warm cookie, the cool ice cream, winning. Oh, I'm getting word that the newest flavor is the a and Root Beer Float. As the actual ice cream flavor itself. Yes. And I do believe I heard somebody talking about it earlier today. I've heard there is a Dr. Pepper float. 
Stop it. I mean, after this weekend, I would go with the diet Dr. Pepper float. <laughs> We're getting real-time pictures here in the booth on these rumors that you're discussing. Here's Travis Chestnut. When they introduced me to the cookies and cream mixed with the cookie dough, I forget what its actual name is. That, I can think that of a couple of names. That changed my life. Should be illegal. Cookie two-step, yes. Next thing you know, it'll be like a Shinerbach ice cream. <laughs> That's next. That, that would taste good. It, it wouldn't be bad. Oklahoma and UConn tied at three, and Norman must win game for the Sooners. Roadrunner back up to bat. He'll race over to first. Sharply hit to center field for Chestnut. My question for you would be, with what you've seen this weekend, I think you and I both felt with some teams there was an element of fragility to them where you just kind of wondered mentally where are things if you face adversity. A&M has faced a little bit of that this weekend, not a ton, but has dealt with what Texas brought to the table last night in extra innings very well. It appears as if it's going to handle its business here tonight against Louisiana, a team that's been ranked in the top 25 a good portion of 2024. What concerns you about this team in the Supers next weekend, and let's say it is Oregon that comes to town, or in Omaha. And then what also excites you about what the Aggies could do in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, I think if their starting pitching looks like what it did or how it has this weekend, that answers some of my questions about the starting pitching, right? I think it was more so about the consistency. We knew that they had arms coming out of the bullpen, but we've seen some good starts now. Another thing... I needed to see, were they going to be able to score in multiple innings? And they've done that today, scored in the four, in four out of the eight innings we've seen so far today. And Braden Montgomery, I thought that was another theme for me. If we saw him break out, they were going to have a better chance coming into this college playoff. 15 stolen bases now for... Chestnut. Uh, to me, seeing the starting pitching and the bullpen in person, understanding the difference that Max Wiener has made here, those are fundamental components of AM baseball. Again, being in College Station for the first time this season, that have stood out to me. Chestnut on the move, and that ball is smoked, and that's a great sign. Grohovac. The home run. And a new single season freshman home run record at Texas A&M was just set. Heck of a time to get things cranked up for number nine in Maroon. Well, we've been waiting for it. And we were just discussing some of the things that I wanted to see this team do during the regional to remind me how dominant they could be. One of them starts at the top of the lineup in Grahovic. Seeing him break out with that swing, we could see him on the proper trajectory going into a super regional if they hold this lead here. Yeah, as you go down the list and the boxes you wanted to check, starting pitching, bullpen, 
Braden Montgomery struggling a little bit, scuffling a little bit in the month of May, hitting about a buck fifty, buck sixty. He got much better than that this weekend, and that was the expectation. The last thing on the old board there to take care of was Grahovac. Had one hit before that stinger, that missile. And, and that's got to feel good. Another thing, too, is you don't know how freshmen are going to respond a lot of times in these situations, right? You want to see guys step up in a major way. And we've talked about un unsung heroes that step up during the college postseason as well. There's going to be those guys that you didn't quite think of. Check this swing again. This is a fastball in the outer half. And he bat flipped it. He knew. Look how tight that turn is from the backside. The rotation is so quick. And give somebody a souvenir. He knows how big that swing was just for his own confidence right there. Pound the chest and take him deep. Nine to one. The Aggies are rolling. Montgomery singled, scored, homered, it's driven in four. Oregon continuing to lead regional final Santa Barbara. reached the College World Series two years ago. They have their eyes on the prize again and path that would include a super regional here in College Station next weekend. And you would have to think if it is Oregon that comes to town, they would be listed as a significant favorite over the Ducks. Schlossnagel knocking on the door at Omaha for the second time in three seasons, potentially. Two away. Mandino with a smile as Montgomery is retired. Nothing now in the eighth inning. Good night for Jackson Appel. A couple of hits. He's been walked. Getting his taste of postseason play on a contender. LSU forced a game seven tomorrow in Chapel Hill. Took out the Tar Heels. 0 oh 2. The defending national champions went on a late run in SEC play and in Hoover all the way to the SEC championship game against Tennessee. And for a while it felt as if the National championship curse would extend to three straight years. We saw with Mississippi State not making the dance, then Ole Miss not doing so after their championship runs. 
Really, for both of those teams, it was a two-year hiatus after winning the title. LSU changed all of that this year. That's after losing Paul Skeens, Dylan Cruz. The top of the MLB draft. And Dino records the strikeout. Appel is retired, and the Aggies are three outs away, nine to one. As that falls off the table, has good movement to it, down and into the lefty, away from the right. Amade will lead things off for the Raging Cajuns, and what a year it's been for Mac Dex's team. 40 wins, an impressive showing here, at Bryan College Station Regional. Ran into a Texas-sized buzzsaw initially, but then battled back, eliminated Grambling, then eliminated Texas. And we were tied at one. At the top of the fourth inning before things changed today in this regional final. Oregon now a 3-0 lead in the top of the ninth out west. And Matt Deggs, a former A&M coach, an assistant here under Russ Childress. Rob Childers, excuse me. You know, his emotions were at a different level this week when he found out that they would be coming back to College Station for the second time in three years in the postseason. Amade draws a walk, leadoff man aboard for the Raging Cajuns. Caden Kent is now in at first base for the Aggies. Well, he played a role last night in that victory in 11 innings against Texas. Absolutely. Son of Jeff Kent. You now he's got the experience and understanding of father that played Major League Baseball at an extremely high level. For two decades. Yes. 19 years. Yes. Pinch runner for the Ragin' Cajuns. Number one is Ben Robicho. Robicho is on the field for the first time this weekend. Nothing in two. Out of Baton Rouge, Catholic High School. That one ripped down the left field line and fair. Robichaux digs for third. And a double for Caleb Stelly. is going to be waved home. Here comes the throw. And of course it's in time. The relay was there, so was the tag. And the first out of the ninth inning comes at home plate. Well, we've talked about defensively, Texas A&M has played a really clean game. Just the positioning of the relay, guys in the right spot. A really good swing here. But you see doing a great job of being able to find the baseball, uh, fire this to Camarillo here, who's in a great position, off the bounce, a strike home, and the perfect tag from Appel. And you see good speed around the bases, and the last second, Degg sends him home, and just a perfect relay. Doesn't get much better than that. That's how you draw it up. That's how you practice it. No, no real need to send him there. Being down the amount right now, but. 
give credit to Texas A&M with an amazing relay. High and tight to John Taylor, and that hit him. Somewhere near the head or neck area, but just below. Runners at the corners. Yeah, how often do you see the first out of an inning made at home plate? No, not, not down, down eight runs. Anything that. Cajuns with runners at first and third. Robichaux was just gunned down at home plate. And here's Duncan Pastor. Raging Cajuns came to College Station as the two seed. Longhorns were the three seed before being eliminated by Louisiana earlier today. 10 to 2 the final. Texas's roster is going to turn over in a multitude of ways entering the offseason. That'll be interesting to watch going into the SEC where the Aggies have been. Full-time transition takes place actually end of June, 1st of July for both UT and Oklahoma. Kind of sets off a chain reaction of events and a new era of college athletics. Ball and two strikes to Duncan Pastor. Tough as a hitter when you know a guy is working for a ground ball. You're trying to do anything you can to almost stay underneath the baseball a little bit, try to catch it a little bit more out in front. Only thing Rudis is looking for right now is for you to roll something over to short or third. Stop by the second baseman. A run is in. And Pastor able to make it a 9-2 ball game. Well, Chestnut able to track it down and prevent it getting out to Braden Montgomery in right field. That'll keep runners at first and second for the time being. Connor Cuff getting set to climb in as a pinch hitter. Freshman from Carthage, Texas. Taylor at second, Pastor at first. Served a short, Camarillo. Get the force out at second, that's all. And Louisiana down to its final out. And 
And it's up to Connor Higgs to keep this game going. And the Aggies on the verge. A great weekend in Aggieland. One and one. Great weekend for Louisiana representing the Sun Belt Conference. Couple of wins, eliminating Texas along the way. That'll pop away from Appel. And another run scores as Taylor touches home plate. Nine to three. And Cuff moves up to second base. Crowd trying to will AM across the finish line here. And the Oregon Ducks just one out west. They punch their ticket to the Supers. Aggies are ready to join him back here in College Station next weekend. And a two out walk to Connor Higgs, and that means one more AB for Trey LaFleur. Trey's been one of my favorite players to watch in this regional. Just one of the smoothest swings you'll see in college baseball. There's a reason why he had a 360 batting average up until this point. With some serious pop. He's helped his team all season long with a great approach. The swing is short. done a great job over there defensively at first base as well. Six hits this weekend, X for Trey. Two tonight. One and two. And the Raging Cajuns down to their final strike. Rudis comes home. Back up the middle into center field for a base hit. Another run will score. Make it 9-4. to four. A good piece of hitting by Trey LaFleur. And the Aggies unable to get this final out just yet. And that brings us to the two-hole hitter, Brian Broussard, Jr., Higgs now at second. The floor at first. And Broussard fouls it back. 
And a great grab by a young man off the carom. Yankees have not trailed tonight. Bunted foul, and again, Louisiana down to its final strike. Louisiana will not go away without a fight. Broussard can somehow reach. Sunbelt Conference Player of the Year would be due next in Kyle DeBarge. But here's Rudis. Texas A&M does it. The Aggies and the Ducks next weekend, right here in the Supers.
Montgomery singled, scored, homered, it's driven in four. Oregon continuing to lead the regional final, Santa Barbara. reached the College World Series two years ago. They have their eyes on the prize again and path that would include a super regional here in College Station next weekend. And you would have to think if it is Oregon that comes to town, they would be listed as a significant favorite over the Ducks. Schlossnagel knocking on the door at Omaha for the second time in three seasons, potentially. Two away. Mandino with a smile as Montgomery is retired. Nothing now in the eighth inning. Good night for Jackson Appel. A couple of hits. He's been walked. Getting his taste of postseason play on a contender. LSU forced a game seven tomorrow in Chapel Hill. Took out the Tar Heels. 0 oh 2. The defending national champions went on a late run in SEC play and in Hoover all the way to the SEC championship game against Tennessee. And for a while, it felt as if the National championship curse would extend to three straight years. We saw with Mississippi State not making the dance, then Ole Miss not doing so. And for their championship runs. And really, for both of those teams, it was a two-year hiatus after winning the title. LSU changed all of that this year. That's after losing... Paul Skeens, Dylan Cruz. Top of the MLB draft. And Dino records the strikeout. Appel is retired, and the Aggies are three outs away, nine to one. 